what is tensile test? A tensile test is commonly used to determine the mechanical property of a material under a tensile force. It's performed by a tensile testing machine which can be electromechanical or hydraulic. The machine works by pulling the sample of a material apart until fracture, and this gives us something called stress strain curve, which tells us a lot about the material's response to forces, such as how strong the material is and how much it can elongate. According to Newton's third law, by any force, there is always an equal and opposite reaction force due to conservation of momentum. When the sample is pulled by a tensile external force, compressive internal pressure is happening to restore the sample at the same time. In this scenario, the stress is defined by the internal pressure divided by the cross-sectional area. This gives us units of Newton's per meter square, namely Pascal's in matrix system, or pound force per inch square, namely PSI in English system. Strains describe how much deformation has occurred and is found by dividing the change in length by the original length, and it has no unit. Let's look at the graph again. As the tensile test begins, the material begins to deform with increasing stress. The region of the linear graph is called elastic deformation. That means if the force was removed, the material will come back to its original shape. The slope of this linear graph is called Young's modulus, or the modulus of elasticity, which is very useful in engineering by telling us how easily the material can stretch and deform. By the way, if we rearrange this equation in this way, it will be called Hooke's law equation. The linear graph followed by a small curve and end up with a point called U strength. Before the U strength is called elastic deformation. After the U strength, any additional stress will cause permanent deformation, also called plastic deformation. Yield strength is another material property that is often mentioned by material suppliers and design engineers. For example, a 0.2% offset yield strength means the resulted strength should be 0.002. By drawing a line that is parallel to the linear graph, we can find out the value of yield strength, let's say 50,000 psi. It will be a typical number for aluminum alloy 2024 T3 at room temperature that is widely used on almost every aircraft. The stress continues to rise and reach the ultimate tensile strength, which is the most stress the material can handle. For aluminum alloy 2024 T3 at room temperature, it will be around 70,000 psi. From here, less stress is needed as the material begins to decrease in cross section which is called necking. As it continues, the material eventually fractures. The stress at this point is called rupture stress or fracture strain. By the way, just because the sample will never go back to its original shape when it's at the plastic deformation region, doesn't mean after you remove the tensile force, the sample won't try to go back to its original shape just for a little bit. For example, after you load 60,000 psi stress to the sample, Draw a line straight down to the axis and find the strain. Let's say it's 0.016. If the sample was originally 7 inches long, it's 7.112 inches now. After you unload the stress to the sample, draw another line that is parallel to the linear graph and find out the strain. Let's say 0.012. Then the sample is going to be 7.084 inches, which shrink a little. It is the same effort when you look at the sample after a fracture. Draw a line that is parallel to the linear graph and find out the strain, let's say 0.13. By going through the equation, the length of fracture is going to be 7.91 inches. According to Marvel, the Hulk is at class 100 level and he can lift more than 100 metric tons, which is about 2,200 pound force of superhuman strength. I assume when Hulk rip off an airplane, he can produce one third to its lifting strength which is 734 power force. I got into the Cessna 182 Skyline and measured the fuselage by myself since I couldn't find what I want in POH. By measuring the skin thickness, the cross-sectional area of the fuselage was calculated to be about 3.3 inch squared. This is not very accurate, but it should give you an idea. When Hulk tears the Cessna Skyline, the tensile stress is 222 psi. We already know 2024 T3 the aluminum alloy Cessna Skyline is using has ultimate tensile strength of 70,000 psi, 
That is to say, the Hulk can rip off at least 315 Cessna Skyline from the fuselage at the same time. Usually, engineers will decide to keep the max allowable load well below failure by dividing the yield or ultimate strength by the safety factor. And safety factor differ between industries. Buildings usually use safety factor of 2.0, while pressure vessels usually use 3.5 to 4.0. Automobiles usually use 3.0, and aircraft usually use 1.5. You can see the field of aerospace engineering use generally lower design factors. If aircraft use too high of the safety factor, it will require structural weight to increase and the cost associated with would be high. Not only that, too heavy of a structural weight would cause the aircraft too heavy to take off. Let's look at the stress strain curve again. The area under the graph defines toughness, which describes how much energy the material can absorb up to fracture. Glass has low toughness because it has smaller area, so glass cannot absorb too much energy and it breaks easily. Not only that, glass is a very brittle material, which I will explain in the next video. The area under the region of elastic deformation is resilience, which describes how much energy the material can absorb up to yield strength. And here is the equation. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and leave the comment below. It will be very helpful. Thank you for watching.